Well, listen, I think it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, if you look at me and say, well, what did he do to his head? Nothing at all. Somebody took a chainsaw and that was it. <laughs> when I went to see the doctor some two years ago, he said, oh, listen, you have a lovely cottage up in Georgia Bay. You forgot to put your hat on summer after summer after summer. So you pay a little bit of a price and that's it. So I hope it doesn't upset you. Just be careful. Don't go without a hat. I, um, I want to be as much constructive help as I can here today. The other thing that I have to remind you, none of you have reached this yet, but I'm now 88 years of age. In two months, I'll be 89. How many of you can achieve that? <laughs> See, here I am, all alone by myself. I think I'm pleased to be here. I, I can't stay very long. I have uh, certain obligations I have to attend to. Uh, they're of a personal nature. Uh, but I could not resist the temptation because, believe it or not, I was there at the time this started. And uh, you've been so successful without my involvement, being totally ignored for those many years. <laughs> I, I couldn't help but come here and remind all of you that I was there when it started and you totally ignored me. <laughs> uh, if you think I'm upset, you'd be totally wrong. <laughs> Well, I left the educational uh, arena in 70-71. Uh, we still continued some uh, very real involvement as premier of this province because I knew the relevance, the importance of the future of this province really was dependent upon the educational community. I remember when I introduced the bill uh, to alter the structure at the University of Toronto, the way it was administered. Uh, I was on my way into uh, give final reading to that bill, and John Robarts, the Premier, said to me, good luck to you. If you try this with Western, you're fired. <laughs> I keep reminding the people at the U of T of that fact of life. And the reality is, and people don't quite understand this, amongst all of those organizations, all of the individuals who are contributing so much today, without the educational field, a lot of this would not happen the way it has. People don't understand. If you want a good person who knows his medicine, find out where he got his education. If you find somebody who has some other talent, find out where he or she got their education. The fundamental spot for all of the people in this province is right here in this room and those people who have followed you in this very important endeavor. I, I had some trouble on occasion explaining to people you can have differences of opinion in the educational community, but there's nothing more important I said that as a lawyer. Uh, I said it uh, <laughs> to my father, who is Crown Attorney, because it happens to be factually correct. And the only thing I would advise to you, Madam President of this organization, you shouldn't be shy, you shouldn't be modest, you should keep reminding the world, along with these others here, that without a first-class educational system which we have, we would not be the province that we are today. <clears throat> But our family had a real feeling about the relevance of education because of the family I have and the interest that they have taken. I, uh, I recall vividly the importance of what was happening in the educational field when I moved on to become premier. I did it with some reluctance because I thoroughly enjoy being minister of education. There's nothing quite like it with any other ministry. And when I became premier, there were some in that House, who became excellent ministers. Uh, our friend from, I call it Scarberry, but that's not the right name for it. You'll all know it. And Tom Wells. Tom Wells made a great contribution to the educational community, and there were several others. And then I had other responsibilities, and I felt that I had to discharge them. And one was the position of this country and its government. I remember going to see the Prime Minister, who had some very strong views, and I, I agreed with some of them. I remember how there was some question whether the province of Quebec might separate from the rest of us. I recall how they did not want to do anything to change the structure of the, uh, the, the country we lived in. And I recall going with Huey Siegel, going to Ottawa, we went right to his home, and we said to him, we hear 
you may be going to Westminster on your own. You may be going to Westminster while ignoring the provinces of Canada. He didn't say yes, but we could tell from what he was not saying that he probably was thinking of this because he had tried three times with the provinces uh, to create the proper solution. It was one of the most difficult areas. A lot of the public didn't quite understand. Some maybe were disinterested. So I said to him, and Huey was with me, I said, Prime Minister, if you go to Westminster on your own, you may go without me, and you may go without the Premier of the province of New Brunswick. He said, you won't help me. I said, the two of us will. It's the others you should worry about. And so he said to me, I'll try once more. And he did. This is what, roughly in 81, whenever it was. And we went there. And I recall it like it was yesterday. We were getting nowhere. None of the other provinces were in agreement with what was being done. I called him at 10 o'clock at night and I said, Prime Minister, we have to make this succeed. I'm urging you to include the notwithstanding clause in something that we will support, you will initiate, and hopefully the rest of the country will come around. Nine o'clock the next morning, that's exactly what happened, and that is what has given to this country the status and uh, I think the enlightenment that that decision has made. I, I have to say this to you, you can have views, I have views, etc. But what's important is that there's an understanding and a support for the right things to do, not only in this province, but in this country. I don't have any instant solutions. I don't pretend to. I can only recall my own time here as a premier and as a minister of education. I recall the debates we had with respect to the Catholic school system. And I said to myself, you know what we went through in creating an understanding whereby the Catholic school system ultimately was treated like the public school system. Some of you may disagree with that. If you do, please don't tell me. <laughs> please go out in the room and feel sorry for yourself. But the fact is, it has happened. And I would say without fear of contradiction, it has worked. And I say this to you, you'll hear the odd occasion when somebody will say, let's bring the two together and it will save money. Saving money is relevant, but it's not the most important thing in life. The most important thing is the proper educational system. If it requires two systems in this province, so be it, because it's working and you'll find most people accept it, not only as being right, but as being useful. All I can say to you is, in my times in public life, Many issues were important, whether it was the state of the country, whether it was this issue or that. Nothing was more fundamental to me as a person was the role I played and the interest I took in the educational system of this province. I, I recall, like yesterday, when a certain political party was very anxious not to approve the college system. I can tell you now, without fear of contradiction, it has been one of the most important things we've accomplished in this province in the history of it, and that college system has worked. <laughs> now that I've wandered from here and there, and I've got a whole lot of notes I've never used, and you should all be very grateful, <laughs> I can only tell you that the only reason I'm here today, because you can tell I'm not quite 100%, the only reason I'm here is because I believe in what you're doing. I believe in what education has done, is doing, and will continue to do for the people of this province. And I'll take one or two questions as long as they're not too difficult, because if they're too difficult, I'll say I'm going home. <laughs>